Hello dear learners, welcome to the massive open online courses on Swayam in Physics for class 11. I am Smita Fangaria, PGT Physics in Amity International School. Today we are going to talk about kinetic theory of gases in which we will be discussing the degrees of freedom. Gas molecules continuously move randomly in all possible directions. Predicting the direction of motion of a molecule is an impossible task. But a statistical analysis can tell the number of possible ways in which a molecule can move. We will now analyze the motion of different types of gas molecules and the energy associated with the motion of the molecules. Now here we talk about the atomicity of molecules. The number of atoms in the molecule is called the atomicity of the molecule. Monoatomic gases have in their molecule only one atom and therefore we say that they have an atomicity equal to 1. All noble gases are monoatomic. These atoms of the molecules are considered as point particles. As a model, I am going to use these small steel balls as the atoms of the monoatomic gases. But of course, the size of the ball is much, much, much larger than the actual atom which exists in the gas. Now, let us talk about diatomic gases. Molecules of these gases have two atoms and are called diatomic having atomicity equal to 2. For example, we have hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen. Most of these gases are a part of Earth's atmosphere and they are all diatomic gases. This is the model of a diatomic molecule and in this the two steel balls are representing the atoms of the diatomic molecule which are separated by this uh, line which is the yellow line over here and it is the it can represent the bond length of the diatomic molecule. Triatomic gases. Molecules of these gases have three atoms and are called triatomic having atomicity equal to 3. Some common examples of triatomic gases are carbon dioxide, nitrous oxide, ozone, etc. Here again I have with me a model to represent the molecule of a triatomic gas. This is a model which is representing a triatomic molecule and here the three steel balls are the three atoms of the molecule and you see the orientation of these three atoms in the molecule which is along one line. As against this we can also have another situation in which you can see that the three atoms are now at the vertex of a triangle. So these are the two possibilities. In one case I may have the molecule like this or I may have the molecule like this. Polyatomic gases. Molecules of these gases may have two or more number of atoms. If 
there are n atoms in the molecule, the atomicity of the gas is n. Some common examples are methane, ammonia, etc. I'll show now the model of a polyatomic molecule and you can see that a polyatomic molecule can look like this and this is representing the model of ammonia. Similarly, I can have the model of methane. So, what is the degree of freedom? The degrees of freedom are the number of independent ways in which a molecule of a gas can move. In case of kinetic theory of gases, we are interested in the motion of the molecules of the gas and the energy associated with this motion of the molecules. The motion of a molecule can mainly be categorized as translational motion, rotational motion and vibrational motion. The number of degrees of freedom also defines the complete state of the molecule and the gas as a whole. Some movements of the molecules are restricted and are called constraints. These constraints mainly depend upon the type of the molecule. The type of molecule is decided by its atomicity and the arrangement of the atoms in the molecule. Now let us find out the degrees of freedom due to translational motion. When the center of mass of a particle moves from its initial position to a new position, we say that the particle is having a translational motion. So, you can see if I have this steel ball which represents an atom, it moves from here to here in space. Then this is categorized as a translational motion. So, the translational motion of the molecule of a gas has three degrees of freedom associated with it. This is irrespective of the atomicity of the molecule. This means that whether it is a monoatomic, diatomic, triatomic molecule, they will all have three translational degrees of freedom. So, here if I move a monoatomic molecule, it can, this is the translational motion of a monoatomic molecule. Similarly, this is the translational motion of a diatomic molecule or this is the translational motion of a triatomic molecule and shown in the figure are the possible translational motion of a molecule along the three coordinate axis. Degrees of freedom associated with the rotational motion. In addition to the translational motion, a molecule can rotate about any axis passing through it. So, there are maximum three degrees of freedom corresponding to the rotational motion of the molecule about three mutually perpendicular axes passing through it. The actual number of degrees of freedom associated with rotation depends upon the constraints on the molecule which does not allow some rotations along some axis. These constraints depend upon the type of the molecule. Now, let us look at monoatomic gases. The single atom of this gas is so small 
that it can be considered to be a point particle with negligible dimensions. So, for an axis passing through the atom, there can be no rotation about the axis as the atom itself lies on the axis. Hence, monoatomic gas molecules will not have any rotational degrees of freedom. In the case of diatomic gases, the separation between the two atoms of their molecule is the bond length. If the line joining the two atoms is taken along the x axis, then there can be no rotation about the x axis as both the atoms lie on the x axis. This is the constraint on the rotation of the molecule, but the molecule can rotate about the y axis, about the y axis and it can rotate about the z axis, z axis passing perpendicular to the line joining the two atoms. Hence, the diatomic molecule will have two degrees of freedom associated with the rotational motion of the molecules about the mutually perpendicular axis. In the figure is shown the, the same scenario in which the rotation is about two mutually perpendicular axis perpendicular to the line joining the two atoms. Now, in the case of triatomic gases, if the three atoms of the molecule are along a line, then it is a linear molecule. But if the three atoms are along the vertex of a triangle, then it is a non-linear molecule. If we again consider the line joining the three atoms of the linear molecule to be along the x-axis, rotation is not possible about the x-axis. Rotation is possible only about the y and the z axis which are passing perpendicular to the line joining the atoms. So, the triatomic linear molecule will only have two degrees of freedom associated with the rotational motion of the molecule. In the non-linear triatomic molecule, rotation about all the three axes is allowed. Hence, there will be three degrees of freedom associated with the rotation of molecules. So, you can see over here, in the case of polyatomic molecules, the polyatomic molecule may be linear or non-linear. Generalizing the above analysis, we can understand that there will be two rotational degrees of freedom for a linear polyatomic molecule and three rotational degrees of freedom for a non-linear polyatomic molecule. Now, let us talk about the degrees of freedom due to the vibrational motion. The vibration of the atom in a molecule slightly changes the internuclear distances between the atoms of the molecule. These vibrations of the atoms of a molecule are complex and periodic 
and become appreciable only at high temperatures. For monoatomic molecules, there is only one atom in the molecule, hence we do not have any vibrational modes. But for a diatomic molecule, the vibration of the atom occurs along the line joining the two atoms. This vibration can slightly increase or decrease the distance between the molecules. The periodic motion of the atoms can also be visualized from this physical model. The force between the atoms is compared with a spring and the periodic motion of the atom causes the spring to expand and compress with a certain frequency. At room temperature, the amplitude of these vibrations is so small that it can be neglected. The vibrational mode becomes significant only at high temperatures. For the case of a triatomic molecule, the vibration of the atoms can be mainly resolved into asymmetric vibration, symmetric vibration and bending. All these vibrational modes are associated with a particular frequency. But again, these vibrations become significant only at high temperatures. In the figure, we see the vibrational modes of a non-linear triatomic molecule. Here I have a non-linear triatomic molecule. In the first case, you can see a bending which is happening and this is approximately how it happens. In the second figure, there is a asymmetric vibration in which this distance reduces between the two atoms and this one increase. Similarly, the third figure shows that the distance between these two simultaneously increases or it decreases, representing a symmetric mode. This can also be modeled by considering, if I consider myself to be a carbon dioxide molecule, then my body represents the carbon atom and here the, my two hands are representing the oxygen atom. So in equilibrium, this is the linear molecule of carbon dioxide. In the bending mode, the oxygen atoms, they go like this. In the symmetric stretch, the, the molecules behave in this manner. The distance between the carbon and oxygen is changing in this manner. In the asymmetric stretch, it goes like this. Now we have the summary of the degree of freedom. If I consider the monoatomic molecule, then the monoatomic molecule has only three translational degrees of freedom. It does not have a rotational motion nor vibrational motion. So in total, it has three degrees of freedom. Similarly, in the case of diatomic molecule, it has three translational degrees of freedom, two rotational degrees of freedom and one vibrational degree of freedom which totals up to six degrees of freedom. For a triatomic linear molecule, there are three translational degrees of freedom, two rotational degrees of freedom and four vibrational degrees of freedom which totals up to nine degrees of freedom. Similarly, for a nonlinear molecule, we have three translational degrees of freedom, three rotational degrees of freedom and three vibrational degrees of freedom, which again totals up to nine. Generalizing it, we see that 
for polyatomic molecules, whether it is linear or non-linear, the total number of degrees of freedom is given by 3n. So let us see the points which are to be noted. All molecules, that is molecules of all types have three translational degrees of freedom. At room temperature, the degree of freedom need not include vibrational modes because for molecules to vibrate in their normal modes, they require much higher energies which is not possible at the room temperature. Now, let us come to a very important law and this law is the law of equipartition of energy. According to this law, for a system in equilibrium, there is an average energy of half kT per molecule associated with each degree of freedom, where k is the Boltzmann constant and T is the temperature of the system. Let us now talk about the energy in translational degrees of freedom. The total translational kinetic energy of a molecule associated with the three translational degrees of freedom along x-axis, y-axis and z-axis is given by half m v x square plus half m v y square plus half m v z square where v x, v y and v z are the x component, y component and z component respectively of the velocity of the molecule and m is the mass of the molecule. So, the total translational energy per molecule according to equipartition of energy is 3 times half kT and this is 3 by 2 kT. Monoatomic gases have only 3 translational degrees of freedom. So, the total energy per molecule of a monoatomic gas is just equal to 3 by 2 kT. So, the total energy of a monoatomic gas, if we consider it per mole, then we multiply 3 by 2 kT with the Avogadro number, which is represented by capital N, and we get the total energy as equal to 3 by 2 RT, where R is the gas constant. Now, let us consider the energy associated with the rotational degrees of freedom. The rotational energy of a molecule associated with the three possible rotational degrees of freedom is given by half I1 omega 1 square plus half I2 omega 2 square plus half I3 omega 3 square where I1, I2, I3 are the moment of inertia of the molecule respectively about the three mutually perpendicular axes and omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3 are the angular velocity of the molecule about the three axes. So, according to equipartition of energy, the total rotational energy of a linear molecule which has two rotational degrees of freedom is 2 times half kT which is equal to kT. A nonlinear molecule on the other hand can have all three rotational degrees of freedom. So, the total rotational energy of a nonlinear molecule is 3 times half kT which is equal to 3 by 2 kT. Now, let us look at the energy associated with the vibrational degrees of freedom. 
each vibration is associated with both kinetic and potential energy. Hence, the energy associated with each vibrational mode is given by half mv square which is the kinetic energy plus half kx square which is the potential energy. This corresponds to the energy of 2 degrees of freedom per vibrational mode and this is equal to 2 times half kt which is equal to kt. Now concluding this and also considering the fact that the vibrational energy is negligible at room temperature, we will now find the average total kinetic energy per molecule for different molecules. For the case of a monoatomic molecule whose examples are helium, neon, argon, the translational degree of freedom totals to 3 because it has 3 translational degrees of freedom and no rotational degrees of freedom. So, the total average energy per molecule is 3 by 2 kT for a monoatomic molecule. Similarly, for a diatomic molecule whose example is oxygen, nitrogen, we have in total 5 degrees of freedom which comes from 3 translational degrees of freedom and 2 rotational degrees of freedom and hence the average kinetic energy per molecule comes to be 5 by 2 kT. For a triatomic linear molecule whose examples are carbon dioxide, hydrogen cyanide, the total degrees of freedom are again 5 which comes from 3 translational degrees of freedom and 2 rotational degrees of freedom. The average kinetic energy per molecule again comes to be 5 by 2 kT. But for a non-linear triatomic molecule whose example is water, in its vapor state, the translational degrees of freedom and rotational degrees of freedom total up to 6 and hence the average kinetic energy per molecule is 3 kT. But I would like to remind you again that we have neglected the vibrational degrees of freedom because we are doing this analysis at room temperature. I hope you have understood about the degrees of freedom and the law of equipartition of energy. Thank you.